Let's look in Revelation chapter 2. Get in the message 2. <laughs> Praise God. Brother Darrell, that's right, Brother Darrell. Brother. Amen. From, uh, uh, I was about to say Riverview, but anyhow, from uh, Boyette Springs Church of God in Riverview, Florida. Amen. Praise God. I appreciate you traveling that distance here tonight. Yeah. Amen. To be with us. Praise God. Amen. Give me my hand for traveling that distance. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1. Unto the angel, somebody say the messenger. When, when, when the scripture here in Revelation talks about an angel, it's not literally talking about an angel. The word angel there translates God's messenger. Hallelujah. Of the church of Ephesus, write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. If you'll look back up in Revelation 1.20, the seven stars is revealed as the angels, the messengers. So God says, I hold the seven. Seven is the number of completion. I hold the seven messengers, or I hold the seven messages, or I hold seven, which is the number of fulfillment. Come on, somebody. I hold the message or the messenger of fullness. The full gospel. The full gospel. Sometimes I have to back up and repeat myself because this mic goes out, but it sounds better than this up here. Hallelujah. So somebody say, it's the full message. It's not a part of the scriptures, it's the full. Somebody shout, when Jesus comes preaching, he gonna tell you all of it. Years ago, I remember his preacher's son, he preached one of the best messages you ever heard on homecoming on heaven. It was homecoming and you could smell the sanctified fried chicken, son. Next door. It was already working its way into the crowd. That preacher son, he preached heaven. He just preached heaven. Then they got through and they were no longer called because people was too worried about filling their gut. Come on now. Amen. And the pastor messed up. He said, Well, Marvin, would you uh, please uh, stand and give the benediction? Now, back in the day when the first pastor ever asked me to give the benediction, I looked around and said, Where's Ben? Has he got an addiction? I'll pray for him. I don't know why the world didn't turn his Amen. Hallelujah. But anyhow, he said, would you please, I knew by this time, he said, would you please rise and give the benediction? I said, Pastor, I'd be glad to. I said, but right before I do, can I say something? He said, yes, Brother Marvin, go ahead. I said, everybody just needs to sit down. I got out on the pew. I said, because we ain't about to pray to go eat first. I said, because the Holy Ghost ain't through preaching in this house. Hello? I said, because when the Holy Ghost comes, he declares the fullness. He declares all truth, John 16 and 13. And I said, we haven't heard all the truth in here today. I said, we've heard one side of eternity, which is heaven. I said, but Jesus preached more about the other side of eternity called hell than he did heaven. And the truth is, everybody in this room ain't going to heaven. There's a bunch of you going to hell. And I began to preach for about the next 30, 35 minutes and the altar filled up. It's the same thing God for microwaves because they had to redo some rewarming back there. Amen. When the Holy Ghost comes, he declares all the truth, John 16, 13. He's the spirit of truth. He don't cut corners. When Moses found God, he found him in the bush. Genesis chapter 3, or Exodus 3, verses 5. Somebody shout, God was in the bush. God weren't around the bush. God weren't beating around the bush. He was in it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. So the fullness, the seven, that number seven is the number of fulfillment. Fullness. Amen. Stars in his hand, the messengers in his hand, the message that's full. Who walketh, listen to this, this is speaking of Jesus. Jesus is talking about himself. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And according to Revelation 120, the seven golden, golden candlesticks are the seven churches he needs that he's speaking of. Somebody say he's walking in the midst. That's the only place he's going to be. He won't be to the side. He won't be to the back. He won't even be to the front. He's got to be in the middle. Come on, somebody. Jesus was saying, I want to reclaim my place in the church again. I want to be in the middle. I want to be the theme. I want to be the whole reason of your attendance and your coming. Come on, somebody. No, for no other reason. My God, what would happen if we really come for Jesus again? What would happen if we really believe, Pastor Ruby, that Matthew 18 and 20 is still the raw truth? Come on, somebody. Where two or three are of my name, they'll be in the midst of you. Amen. And some of those, uh, amen, glory to God, uh, that say they believe that scripture who are sitting at their house reclined in their recliner right now, they could have been here tonight but gave themselves all kind of excuses uh, to skip tonight. Come on, church. Uh, some of them use the storm to do it with. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, but listen to the word of the Lord. Uh, if they really believe that scripture, 
preacher, they'd be in this house. They wouldn't be here because Marvin's here. Come on, somebody. They won't be here because Pastor Ruth is here. They'd be here because the doors were open and it was his house. How did they believe that if two or three of them would just get in here, he'd come up in the midst of them? Come on, somebody. What would happen if we really came for him? I believe we come more often than we do. Praise God. I believe we'd come more often than we do. If we really, really believe. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 25 says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some do. Exert, exhort one another, much more as you see that day, the coming of the Lord approaching. Ain't it amazing the Hebrew writer, which I believe was Paul himself, he said, when you see that day approaching, the coming of Jesus, when he gets closer, he gets nigh at hand, and you see all these signs coming to pass, that his return is imminent, and it's about to take place. He said, you need to have church more then than you ever have. You need to sing yourselves together. But ain't it amazing? Amen. People's calling off church. Uh, preachers won't have revival, Pastor Ruby, because they think we will have enough money because enough people won't come. Because they can't even hardly get nobody to come on Sunday night, much less Wednesday night. Come on, church. And some don't even have it on Sunday night no more. Amen. I, I didn't read in the scripture when you see Jesus is about to come and amen the perilous times are on the earth uh, amen to stop having church and have church less come on somebody amen my Bible grandma Bible said you all exhort one another encourage one another command one another get in his house even that much more amen. 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 praise God Luke 1 verse 27 Simeon was led by the Spirit of God to the temple. And it was there in verses 30 of Luke 2 that he held Jesus in his arms and he said, my eyes have seen his salvation. Yes, yes, salvation. Amen. Somebody shout, sin. Sin. Was led by the Holy Ghost yes. to the house of God. That's that scripture for you who's going to watch this video and all you ever do is sit in front of your iPhone and your uh, YouTube watching device, whether it's your computer or your phone, or maybe on your new TV that's got all the access to the internet as well. And you don't never go to church. Uh, you don't never go to the house of God. Uh, and you talk about, I'm getting all I need right here watching Brother Marvin and all these other preachers. Uh, well, I rebuke you. You are deceived in the name of Jesus. Uh, and you're not led by the Holy Ghost you say you're led by because if you was led by the Holy Ghost uh, you'd get off of your religious do nothing and you'd get into the house of God somewhere. Hallelujah! Because the Holy Ghost uh, if He's leading you uh, according to Luke 2 27, you get into the house of God uh, and the Bible said in Psalms 92 uh, and verses 14 uh, they that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Uh, if you ain't planted in the house, you can forget flourishing in His presence. Get out your bed on Sunday and get to the house of God. Get out your recliner. The Bible's called for. Quit giving excuses. Psalms 138, verse 7. The Bible said, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. David said, When I see trouble, it's time for revival. All right, amen. The carnal pastor looks and says, we're in times of trouble. People's not supporting. People won't come so we can't have revival. You just let the devil make you a big dummy that's deceived. Trouble ought to not excuse us from having church. Trouble ought to not excuse us from having revival. Trouble ought to excuse us, amen, to say, let's have revival. Let's have some church. Come on, somebody. What happened? Amen. But we live in such a world of comfort and entertainment that are years, years, many years ago, people didn't have all these conveniences. Amen. And glory to God going to church. Amen. Getting in his presence is where they got their fix at. People get their fix at the baseball game and the football games and uh, sitting in front of the TV or the computer. Come on. Come on. Come on. Technology. I'm glad if you do watch us on YouTube and Facebook or MarvinBoothMinistries.com. But if you ain't faithful, attend in a house somewhere of worship uh, where the gospel's being preached in the name of Jesus and supporting the ministry, amen, with your tithe and offerings, uh, you are deceived. Uh, you're not led by the Holy Ghost, and you need to repent. Save the Lord or be left where I go. Now, son, I would argue right there, so you're telling me go 
going to church makes me say no more. Go, no, going to church won't make you say no more than going to a car wash makes you a car. Right. I used to use the metaphor, no more than going to Dunkin' Donuts make you a donut. But if you keep going to Dunkin' Donuts, you're going to look like a donut. So I quit using that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I know you brothers. Y'all got some of that inner tube stuff going on too. Like me. Praise God. Trying to work on me. Praise God. Amen. But, but, but listen, I'm not saying, I'm not advocating going to church to make you a Christian. Amen. Because they supposed to go to church all the time. Glory to God. They still just as lost as the devil. But let me tell you what will happen when you become a Christian and you really get saved. You won't go to church. If you've lost the desire to go to his house, you might just be out of fellowship with him. And about to breathe. Breathe. <laughs> So here we are in Ephesians 2 still, verse 1 and 2. He's speak, speaking to the church in Ephesus, Jesus is. It's written in red. He said, I got a message to the seven churches in my hand. Hallelujah. And he says, I want to walk in the midst of a church that's got seven, that's got fullness. Come on, somebody. I want to bring my fullness. I want to be in the middle. Hallelujah. Well, Brother Mark, we can't have revival. We can't have church on Sunday night because there just won't hardly nobody come. My question is, will Jesus come? That's excuse enough for me. Because is it not him we're really coming for anyhow? I promise you, if you keep coming for him, he'll call somebody to come to him. I think about sometimes Pastor Ruby, the souls is being missed on Sunday nights and nights. It's being missed. Come on, somebody. Because we begin to excuse ourselves in these latter times. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to have to preach on excuses one day. Verses 2, I know.